The Ukrainian military intelligence agency claimed responsibility for the killing of the head of security at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant on Friday, calling him a collaborator with Russia. The agency posted a video on its Telegram channel showing a SUV exploding. Hours later, the Russian investigative committee corroborated the information and Andrei Karatki was killed when his car exploded not far from his home in the town of Enerhodar, where the nuclear plant is located. The GUR claimed Karatki, a Ukrainian national, voluntarily collaborated with Moscow after it took control of the power plant in the early weeks of the ongoing conflict in 2022. The agency alleged he had passed on personal data of the facility's workers to Russian forces, highlighting those with a pro-Ukrainian position, as well as organizing events which aimed to support the occupation. The Zaporizhia nuclear plant, located in southern Ukraine, is the largest in Europe and has been under Russian control since March 2022. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called once again for cooperation in combating the Russian air threat in his nightly address on Thursday. Zelensky called out the lack of decisions on joint operations and joint defense, adding that, what works in the skies of the Middle East and helps Israel's defense can work just as well in the skies of our part of Europe in Ukraine. We see that Однією з головних причин дефіциту безпеки у небі України і, зокрема, поруч із кордонами НАТО, наших сусідів, є дефіцит рішень про спільну роботу, про спільний захист. Те, що працює у небі близького Сходу і допомагає обороні Ізраїлю, може працювати і в небі нашої частини Європи, в Україні, так само допомагаючи рятувати життя. Усім нам в Європі Однаково це потрібно. Україна в альянсі, і не лише заради більшої спільної сили, не лише тому, що це просто справедливо та заслужено для українців, а ще й тому, що тільки завдяки повній інтеграції України, чіткому нашому положенню в Євроатлантиці можна надійно прибрати стару і злочину російську спокусу, ламати порядок життя в Європі. The Russians captured at the Vovchansk aggregate plant appealed to the Russian side and asked to be exchanged for fighters of the Azov regiment. Recall, on September 24, the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine announced that the Vovchansk aggregate plant had been liberated and cleared after a week-long operation. Ukrainian special forces managed to capture around 20 Russian soldiers during the mission. The prisoners were taken by the Russian Volunteer Corps, which fought as part of the Ukrainian army. An officer from the Timer Special Unit of Defense Intelligence of Ukraine who goes by the alias, Viking, has revealed details of its operation to liberate the Vovchansk aggregate plant in Kharkiv Oblast. Viking confirmed that the special forces were able to capture 20 Russian soldiers as a result of the operation, which went on for more than a week. The battle lasted just over a week. There was intense fire from the enemy. The enemy at the plant put up significant resistance, but ultimately we completed the mission successfully. Twenty Russians were captured at the Vovchansk aggregate plant and several dozen were killed. Another four attempted to leave the plant and were neutralized outside the plant's perimeter, he added. It is noted that Russian troops are deploying their maximum range weapons to target the Vovchansk aggregate plant in the Kharkiv region. This was reported by Colonel Vitaly Sarantsev, spokesperson for the Kharkiv Operational and Tactical Group. According to Sarantsev, the situation in the Kharkiv sector remains difficult as Russian forces continue to assault Ukrainian defensive positions. Vovchansk is currently the focal point of these attacks, with the aggregate plant becoming a primary target for Russian forces after its liberation. Despite not holding significant tactical value, the plant's loss dealt a considerable symbolic blow to the Russians. The enemy is now using the maximum range of its weapons in this area, 
said Sarantsev. Russian forces are deploying the TOS-1A heavy flamethrower system and launching guided aerial bombs in an attempt to destroy the plant. The standard practice is to destroy what they couldn't hold on to, he added. It should be noted that the Russian servicemen recently captured by the Ukrainian army want to replace them with the servicemen of the Azov regiment who are in Russian captivity.